Uh, welcome to our session today. I am your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick. Today's class is a continuation of what we've been doing. And in our class today, I want us to handle a question in our blog model paper, and that should be question number four. That should be question number four. Question number four in our blog model paper. Up to now, we've handled question number one. We've handled question number two. We've handled question number three in our blog model paper. So today's class, I want us to look at question number four. And this blog model paper, I believe by now you already have the paper. You already have the paper by now. You already have the paper. And if you haven't gotten a blog model paper, you can download MDARASA from Play Store for those who are using Android. Just go to Play Store, search MDARASA, download the app, and create your account. After you've created the account, you just go to CastNeb. Then under CastNeb, you'll see an area whereby you have block model papers. Select the one that you are doing, that is public finance and taxation. For those who are using iOS, for those who are using iPhones, Kindly, you can log into our portal, that is web.mdarasa.co.ke. The same case, create your account, and after you've created an account, you will go to the dashboard and select where we have blog model papers. In case of anything or further guidance, you can always talk to us on 708-068-851. How you can access, probably you've tried all this and you've seen you're having an issue. You can always talk to us on that number and we'll be here to assist you. So, as you are saying that uh, today's class, and by the way, also the previous videos for question one, question number two, and question number three, they are still accessible in our, in our phone application. They are still accessible in our phone application. So today's class, I want us to handle question number four. And question number four, ideally, this is a concept to do with custom duty and capital allowances. The concept that you are going to look at in this part will be talking of the concept to do with custom duty and the concept that should be capital allowances. Capital allowances. These are the concepts under this question number four remember a lot have changed more so when it comes to custom duty and also when it comes to capital allowances a lot a lot have changed so it's very good for you to be updated in the same case we provided all these updated notes in our phone application so today's class my good students let us proceed and look at this question that you are tested in question number four so I'm going to share this block model paper in our screen. You can take a screenshot of that question and we are going to start working from there. So this is a question of ours. This is a question, my good students. This is a question. This is what you are told in this question of ours. This is what you are told. Part A of the question. Part A of the question you are told. You are told that... Uh, Identify, 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 identify four areas designated as custom areas under the Custom and Excise Act. Identify four areas designated as customs areas under the Custom and Excise Act. That is part A of the question. So whenever you've seen such a question, my good student, and you are being tested on the concept of custom, a very important step that you must take first of all is to ask yourself do you understand the concept of custom duty do you know what custom duty is this is the first question that you're going to ask yourself so even before we proceed and handle that question i want us to look at any time any time you are talking of custom duty what will come at the back of our mind my good students any time we are talking of custom duty what must come at the back of our mind when you are asked to 
give a definition of what custom duty is. When you are asked to give a definition of what custom duty is. So talk of custom duty. Very important that first of all, we should understand the definition of custom duty. And I am asking you, my good students, do you know what custom duty is? Do you know what custom duty is? Uh-huh. A question that I'm posing to you guys, do you know what custom duty is? Very important for us to know what custom duty is. And whenever we'll be talking of custom duty, my good student, anytime we'll be looking at a custom duty, I'll be looking at a concept that these are form of tax that are levied on importation or exportation of goods. Tax levied on importation and exportation of goods is what you're telling it as what? As custom duty. So in summary, we are saying that anytime you are talking of custom duty, anytime you are talking of custom duty, this is what you are saying. We are talking of refers to tax imposed, refers to tax imposed, refers to tax imposed, refers to tax imposed on goods, on goods, on goods, when they are transported, when they are, when they are transported, when they are transported, uh, when they are, when they are transported, when they are transported, when they are transported across international borders, across international borders, across international borders, across international, across international borders, across international borders, across international borders. This is what you're turning it as what? As custom duty. Or in other words, simply, you can also note and say that ideally, this is just a tax that is levied on import, tax that is levied, tax that is levied on imports, and exports of goods. In simple terms, you can say a custom duty ideally is a tax that is levied on imports of and exports of what? And exports of goods. And export and export of goods. In other words, we can term it as uh, like that definition of custom duty. So very important that we understand that, very important that we understand that, very important that we understand that. Now, the moment I'm able to understand what custom duty is, come back to our question, my good students. Come back to our question, come back to our question and see what you are asked, and see what you are asked. In our question here, clearly, you can clearly see you are asked to identify four areas designated as custom areas under the Custom and Excise Act. So areas designated as custom areas, areas designated as custom areas, talk of areas designated as custom areas, as custom areas. We have so many, but you're just going to look at a few. We have so many, but you're going to look at a few. Uh, some of the areas designated as a custom areas, we normally tend to talk about, number one, we normally tend to talk about the custom bonded warehouses. Custom bonded warehouses. Custom bonded, custom bonded warehouses. Custom bonded warehouses. Custom bonded warehouses. Custom bonded warehouses being our number one. Being our number one, custom bonded warehouses, custom bonded warehouse, 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 number one. Number two, my good student, we normally tend to talk about custom bonded warehouses. Number two, we normally 
we normally tend to talk about the custom warehouses. Custom warehouses. Uh huh. Custom warehouses. Number three, we normally tend to talk about the government warehouses. Government warehouses. Government warehouses. Government warehouses. So we just mentioned but a few. We just mentioned but a few. So these are some of the areas that are designated as custom warehouses. The ones that you must always have at the back of your mind. The ones that you must always have at the back of at the back of your mind. At the back of your mind. Now, another key concept, my good students, because remember when you are saying we are doing block revision as we normally tend to look at it on a wider perspective. For us to grasp some of the main concepts that will assist us also, not only the question that we are doing, but also we are looking at it on a wider perspective to enable us to understand the whole of these concepts. Okay? So, after we've looked at the areas, another key concept that I want us to understand, my good student, in the event that you are told to define the following terms under custom and exercise uh, act, define the following terms. 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 I know you must be wondering what are these terms. I know you must be wondering what are these terms. But they are very important, by the way. They are very, very important in this concept of what? In this concept of custom. So number one concept that I want us to understand when you are asked to define what restricted goods are, Talk of restricted, talk of restricted goods. Number two, when you're asked to uh, define what ad valorem tax is, ad valorem custom duty is, ad valorem custom duty. And when you're asked to define what specific custom duty is, specific custom duty. Those are the three main terms that I want us to look at. When you are told to define restricted goods under custom act, when you are told to define ad valorem custom duty, and when you are asked to define what specific custom duty is. Are you able to give this definition? That's the most important question that you must always ask yourself. So, I want us to break it down and understand each and every concept here. We start with the first one, restricted goods. We start with the first one, restricted goods. When you are talking of restricted goods, my good student, under custom, what must we have in mind? Restricted goods. When you are talking of restricted goods, my good students, what must we always have in mind? What must we always have in mind? You will find that ideally if you approach it with a layman's perspective, if you just approach it with a layman's language, you'll find that it won't be an issue for us. It won't be an issue for us. So in simple terms, you normally tend to say that restricted goods are goods whose exportation or importation restricted goods are goods whose ex importation or exportation must be done strictly must be done strictly in accordance with the requirement in accordance with the requirement of custom and excise act of custom and excise act or the conditions imposed by the law or the conditions imposed by the law or the conditions imposed by the law so this is what you're timing it as what restricted goods restricted goods this is what you're timing it as restricted goods very important now I know you must be wondering what ad valorem tax is. Number two, important definition that any time you are looking at custom duty you must always have in mind is what you are timing it as what? As ad valorem custom duty. Ad valorem custom duty.
Pastorm duty. Ad valorem custom duty. You must be seeing this probably also while doing your revision and you wonder what is this. Today I want us to solve that miss uh, I want us to solve that uh, that uh, that question when you are talking of ad valorem tax. So anytime you are talking of ad, ad valorem tax custom duty my good student this is what you must always have in mind. We normally tend to look at it in a case whereby amount this is a given amount of this is a given amount of, of a given amount a given amount a given amount of money a given amount of money per unit a given amount of money per unit not sorry not sorry not ad valorem tax uh, this case we normally tend to talk of a percentage talk of uh, these are percentage of duty this is a percentage this is a percentage this is a percentage of this is a percentage of duty a percentage of duty a percentage of duty my good student you are saying that ad valorem tax is a percentage of duty on the value of goods imported on the value on the value of goods imported 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 eg when you are talking of say 30% 30% on the value of imported goods eg 30% on the value on the value of imported goods 30% on the value of imported goods so we are saying that these are percentage of duty on the value of goods imported eg we are saying that 30 percent on the value of goods take for example this case maybe we are importing a car and importing this car maybe the value of the car assuming is 5 million assuming the value of the car this is the value of the car value of the car maybe assuming is 5 million so at valorem custom duty will come in place whereby i'm going to take 30% of the 5 million. This is what you are going to term it as what? Ad valorem custom duty. That is what you are going to term it as ad valorem custom duty. Then, what about specific custom duty? I want us to differentiate between these two terms. What about specific custom duty? Number three, when you are talking of specific custom duty, what must we note? Specific custom duty when you are talking of specific custom duty my good student what must we understand now this is where we normally tend to take it as what as term it as uh, the value of good of course you normally tend to take this is the amount this is this is a given amount we normally tend to say that uh, this is a given amount a given a given amount a given amount a given amount a given amount of duty a given amount of duty on the value a given amount of duty on the value of goods imported on the value of goods on the value of goods imported on the value of goods imported a given amount of money on the value of goods imported on the value of goods imported on the value of goods imported say for example like in this case maybe you are talking of eg 300000 300 this is a amount a given amount on duty on the value of goods imported on the value of goods on the value of goods imported a given amount of duty per unit actually you can add per unit a given amount of duty per unit on the value of goods imported keyword is per unit a given amount of duty per unit on 
the value of goods imported. Example, you are saying I'm having 300,000, 300,000 on importation of a car. 300,000 on importation, on importation, on importation of a car. So this is what you are terming it as what? Specific custom duty. This is what you are terming it as specific custom duty. Look at the difference. At this point, you are taking a percentage. Looking at at Valorem custom duty, you are taking a percentage, my good students, of the value of goods. Why? Looking at specific custom duty, we are looking at a given amount of duty per unit on the value of goods imported. Like in our case, you are saying 300,000 on importation of what? Of a car. So these are some of the key concepts that we must always have at the back of our mind. Now, looking at another area of importance, my good student, that probably if you are asked, what will you say? If you are asked, for example, if I, if I may pose that question, what are some of the importance of custom duty or purposes of custom duty in your country? Very important. I am posing that question. What if you are asked to give purposes, purposes slash importance, purposes slash importance of custom duty in your country, of custom duty in your country, purposes or importance of custom duty in your country. What will you say? What will you say? And this one, I'm leaving it to you guys. So, I'm requesting you that kindly go through the whole concept of custom duty. Very important. And most of the cases you'll find that it must be tested in an exam. Most of the cases, it is usually tested, by the way, in our exams. So, I want you guys to go through the whole concept of custom duty. Remember, for us, we just look at some of the main elements, some of the key concepts that you must always have at the back, at the back of your mind. So the question had asked us to just mention some specific areas designated for custom duty. But we went ahead and look at it on a wider perspective. So, we can't clear it at this point. Remember, we have all these notes in our phone application. We have the videos of custom duties in our phone application, which will assist you to understand all of this concept. So, to that juncture, I want us to proceed to question part B, or rather question 4, part B, and see what you are asked. Question 4, part B, this is what you are told, my good student, question 4. Part B, I'm sharing the question here. This is what we are told. That part B, highlight four qualifying costs for tax purposes undermining business. Highlight four qualifying costs for tax purposes undermining, undermining business. Undermining business. Undermining business. So this will take us to a concept of what? Capital allowance. Which we've said, by the way, a lot have changed. A lot have changed in regard to capital allowance in regard to capital allowance in regard to capital allowance so part b of that question we are asked about the concept of mining allowance we are asked about the concept of mining allowance we are asked about the concept of mining allowance we are asked about the concept of mining allowance. You are asked about the concept of mining allowance. So anytime you are talking of mining allowance, what should come at the back of our mind? What should come at the back of our mind? Anytime you are talking of mining allowance, we should always understand that ideally these are allowances granted to investors on mining operations as simple as that we are saying that mining allowance is a deduction granted to investors on mining 
operations, on mining operations, on mining operations. As simple as that, for us to understand that definition. So now, after we've talked of the definition of that, key area is for us to understand the qualifying cost for mining allowance. Talk of qualifying costs, qualifying cost for mining allowance, 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 qualifying cost for mining allowance. What must we always have in mind anytime you are talking of qualifying cost for mining allowance? Just a moment. So anytime, my good students, you are talking of, anytime, we are talking of the qualifying cost for mining allowance, you must always recall this. 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 Number one item, number one item, number one item that you can have, we cannot say, number one item that you can have, we cannot say that we have cost of searching, number one. We normally tend to talk about cost of searching. Cost of searching, testing, and gaining access. Cost of searching, testing, and gaining access, and gaining access, and gaining access to the mineral. And gaining access to the mineral and gaining access to the mineral that is number one number two qualifying items for mining allowance number two we normally tend to talk about cost of acquiring rights cost of acquiring rights cost of acquiring rights cost of acquiring rights over the mineral deposits over the mineral deposits over the mineral deposits over the mineral deposits uh-huh number three my good students some of the qualifying items you normally tend to talk about cost of buying specialized mining machines cost of buying cost of buying uh, specialized cost of buying specialized cost of buying specialized mining cost of buying specialized mining cost of buying specialized mining machines cost of buying specialized mining machines cost of buying specialized mining machines uh-huh number 4 we can also talk of what you can also note and say cost of constructing building on the mining site cost of constructing cost of constructing a building cost of constructing a building on mining site on the mining site cost of constructing a building on the mining site on the mining site on the mining site then the last qualifying item that you can also mention we normally tend to talk about Cost of development, general administrative expenses, and consultancy fees in card, and consultancy fees in card before the commencement of mining. 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 So, the moment you are able to grasp the qualifying items under mining allowance, you will be in a very good position. You will be in a very good position. You will be in a very, very good position. Now, summarizing this concept, we can't summarize this concept without us understanding the rates for mining allowance. And remember, this is also one of the areas that was affected by the changes that were done in 2020. 
probably in the videos that we may have done earlier on, maybe we did those videos with the previous rates. But in our class today, I want us to look also at our new rates. So this is what you are going to talk about. Anytime, anytime, anytime we are talking of, anytime we are talking of rates for mining allowances, anytime you are talking of rates for mining allowances, rates for mining allowances. I want us to talk of two. Previously, which was applied previously, this is 2019 going backwards, 2019 going backwards, we were talking of first year, first year, first year, my good students, first year, first year, we were looking at the rate of 40% first year, this is our first year, first year, we are looking at the rate of 40%, so we are saying first year, first year, first year, we were talking of the rate of 40%. Then the other years, because by then we were assuming that mining had a lifespan of seven years. So talk of the second to the seventh year, we are taking at the rate of 10% on straight line basis, on straight line basis, on straight line basis, on straight line basis, on straight line basis. But what about the current mining allowance rates? Talk of our current mining allowance rates. Talk of our current mining allowance rate, mining allowances rates. Talk of our current mining allowances rates. The first year of operation, the first year of operation, we are going to provide this mining allowance at the rate of 50%. Subsequent years, talk of our subsequent years. For subsequent years, we are going to provide mining allowance at the rate of 25% on reducing balance basis. On reducing balance basis. On reducing balance basis. On reducing balance basis. This is very important for us to grasp these concepts. It is very important for us to grasp this concept. It will really, really assist us. So for those students who are doing the exams from 2021 going on, uh, forward, unless otherwise, again, they have changed, or rather unless otherwise they will change probably in future, as of today, we should understand and know that mining allowance will be provided as follows. The first year, 50%. Subsequent years, 25% on reducing balance basis. On reducing balance basis. On reducing balance basis. So this is very important for us to note this. It is very important, my good students, for us to note this concept. For us to know these concepts. So to this point, I want us to meet in the next session whereby you are going to handle this part of the question that has remained in question number four. We are going to handle this part of the question that has remained in question number four. That is, uh, we are told uh, PESA Limited commenced manufacturing on 1st January 2020 after incurring the following capital expenditure. The question continues here. Uh, the question continues at this point. This is a question. This is a question. This is a question. So, my good students, up to this point, I want you to join me in the next session whereby we are going to look at capital allowance now fully on from ID, IBD, WTA, to the point of preparing our WTA schedule. To the point of preparing our WTA schedule. So thank you so much for this time. And let us meet in our next class. Let us meet in our next class. Thank you so much.